Hi guys, I'm glad these videos are working out for you. If you have more questions, you let me know, okay? So I'm gonna do 35, 37, and 39 in this video because they're shorter and they can be clumped together. So 35, does the hydrogen atom expand or contract when it's excited from the N1 to the N3? Now remember, the ends are the energy levels. So here's the nucleus. We have, this would be the N is equal to one. This is N is equal to two. This is N is equal to three. This is called the principal quantum number. It's essentially the um, energy levels, the rings around the atom. So we're going from here all the way out to the third one here. So the atom is getting bigger when that happens. So it is expanding when that occurs because of the fact that it's going from a smaller energy level to a bigger one. Question 37. Is energy emitted or absorbed when it's following the electronic transitions that occur in N2 to N is equal to N N is equal to four to N is equal to two. Okay, so there's a qualitative way of looking at this and there's a quantitative. I'm gonna show you both just so that way you have the numerical value to go with it. First of all, the qualitative, this is N is equal to one, two. This is our N is equal to two here. Then we have N is equal to three. And the last one is N is equal to four. So we're going from here to there. So when it goes it, it, when it goes towards the nucleus, it's giving off energy. When it's going away from the nucleus, it has to gain energy in order for that to happen. So since we're going from the outside in, it is automatically going to be emitting. But let's look at this numerically. You will find an equation in your book that is delta E is equal to the final energy minus the initial energy, which is also equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, one over in final squared minus one over in initial squared. Okay, I'm gonna give you a second to write that down. This is on page, um, this is on page 221. Just so that way you have, if you wanna refer back to it. Okay, so from here, we're gonna plug that two and that four into here because initially it was at the four and then it went to the second energy level, which is the final. So the change of energy is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18. By the way, that's Ryberg's constant. That's the constant, it doesn't change. So that number will always be there. One over two squared, because it's final minus the initial, minus one over four squared. So that tells me is that number again, 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18. 1 over 4 minus 1 over 16. So let's take that out of the fraction form and into a decimal. So that's a little bit easier to work with. 0 0.25 minus 0 0.0625. So when you subtract that out, it's 0 0.1875. Now we're gonna multiply it to come out to be negative 4.09 times 10 to the negative 19. Again, the book didn't actually ask you to calculate it. However, I wanna show you the correlation. Notice that it's negative, the fact that it's negative 
tells you that energy is being given off. All right, let's look at another one. This one you can't really do as a quantitative number, but we can still analyze it based on what we just said. All right, we have no idea what these N1 and N2 are. We just know that one is 2.12 angstroms. By the way, this is an angstrom. The other one is 8.48. So it is going um, to this direction. So we're going out to 8.48. Because we're getting bigger, we have to absorb energy in order for that to happen. So therefore, it's being absorbed. Again, I don't have an exact equation handy for that. But because we can say as it goes outside, as it goes further away from the nucleus, it absorbs. And when it comes closer to the nucleus, it emits. Part C of this question. An electron adds to the H plus ion and ends up in the N is equal to 3. So we have... A nucleus here. Again, I don't have an equation for this. But it's going to end up at the n is equal to 3. And it's an electron all the way out here coming closer to the nucleus. Because, it, again, we're getting closer to the nucleus. It doesn't matter how far away that electron is. If it's getting closer to the, ele to the nucleus, it's emitting energy. Okay, question 39. Using equation 6.5, calculate the energy of an electron going from n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 6. That's the same equation that we were just using. So I'm going to rewrite that equation again. And actually, I think this question was not updated after the rewrote the book because it's actually... 6.6, not 6.5. 1 over n final minus 1 over n initial. Okay, so we're going from n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 6. Oh, they want us to do it individually. So... They are only want us to do one and then the other. Okay, so let's do the n is equal to 2 first. So e is equal to negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules, 1 over 2 squared. I'm doing the 2 first. So negative 2.18. times 1 over 4, which is 0.25, which then our energy is going to equal 5.45 times 10 to the negative 19. And that's going to have a negative out there because of the negative with the Rydberg's constant. Now let's do n is equal to 6. We're going to do the exact same process. I'm going to draw a line here so that way you can tell the difference between the two. times 1 over 6 squared. So that's going to be 1 over 36. All right, so when you calculate that out, that comes out to be 6.06 .06 times 10 to the negative 20 joules. Again, because of this negative sign, it's going to be negative as well. All right, calculate the wavelength when the radiation is released. When oh, the radiation released, when the electron moves from 6 to the 2. So this is the initial, this is the final. So that, that means this is the final. This is the initial. So in order to get that change of energy, you're going to have to do final minus the initial. 